This is a problem from gate 2003 for two points. If all permutations are equally likely, what is the expected number of inversions in a randomly chosen permutation of the numbers 1 to n? If you want to try this problem at this stage, you can do so by pausing the video. How many permutations do there exist in total of the numbers 1 to n? n factorial. There are n factorial permutations of the numbers 1 to n. And what we need to compute is the average number of inversions across all these n factorial permutations. The expected number of inversions is going to be the average uh, and the average is just going to be the sum of the total number of inversions in all the permutations divided by n factorial. So because each permutation is equally likely the expected value of the number of inversions is just going to be a simple average. If we look at two specific permutations out of these n factorial, let's take the sorted sequence of numbers. This is one permutation among these n factorial. Another permutation is the reverse sorted sequence. The number of inversions for this permutation in this permutation is 0. The number of inversions in this permutation is in C2. And we've seen this in a previous problem that this is because every time you choose a pair of elements from the reverse sorted sequence, the element on the left is going to be larger than the element on the right. So every pair of elements is going to be an inversion in the reverse sorted sequence. Here, every pair that you choose, every pair of elements that you choose, will be such that the element on the right is going to be larger than the element on the left. So there are going to be no inversions in this sequence and there are exactly nc2 inversions in this sequence. And this is basically the maximum possible number of inversions and this is the minimum possible number of inversions. One of the ways to uh, think about all these n factorial inversions, uh, sorry, all these n factorial permutations is by, is by conceptually dividing them into pairs, into pairs of permutations such that each permutation within a pair is the reverse of the other permutation in the pair. For example, this permutation is the reverse of this permutation. You can, you can reverse this sequence to get this sequence and you can reverse this sequence to get this sequence. So if I represent all the n factorial permutations as, you know, dots, we can group together permutations in pairs such that within a pair, the two permutations are the reverse of one another. So there are factorial n divided by two such pairs of permutations. And the reason for dividing these n factorial permutations into pairs is that if we look at any arbitrary permutation we took a specific example of a pair here, but we can generalize uh, 
we can generalize the pattern that we see here to any other pair. So let's consider a permutation which has k inversions. And let's consider it's reversed the other permutation in the pair which is the reverse of the first one. Now if we look at two elements in the original permutation, let's say these elements have indices i and j and the values are a of i and a of j. There are only two possible options. Case 1 i comma j is an inversion. This means a of i is greater than a of j. The other possibility is that i comma j is not an inversion. That is a of i is less than a of j. Now if you look at the same pair in the reverse permutation, the element that is here is going to map to some element over here. Okay, let's say the index of this element in the first permutation is i and the indices vary from 1 to n. The indices in the reverse permutation are also uh, numbered from 1 to n. The the element which was in the first position here is going to go to the nth position in the reverse permutation. And in general, you can note that the ith element in the first permutation is going to map to the n minus i plus first element of the reverse permutation. And the jth element likewise is going to map to n minus j plus first position in the reverse permutation. Now these indices don't, uh, we are not that concerned about the actual value whether it's n minus j plus 1 or n minus i plus 1. What's important is that these two values are going to be flipped around in the reverse permutation. So if i comma j is an inversion in the first permutation, when you flip them around, they are no longer going to create an inversion. Of course, their indices have changed, n minus, uh, n minus j plus 1 and n minus i plus 1. But in terms of their values, we are saying that if this element was greater than this element, then in the reverse sequence, this element is going to be greater than this element. So the element on the left is no longer going to be larger than the element on the right. So by flipping this inversion around in the reverse permutation, it's no longer going to be an inversion. In the same way, if i comma j had not been an inversion in the original permutation, in the reverse permutation they would have created an inversion because a of i in, uh, would have been less than a of j in this permutation and so when you flip them around the element on the left is going to be the larger one and so uh, in the reverse permutation these two elements are going to create an inversion. So we can see a generalization here that if we take any pair i comma j it is going to be an inversion in exactly one of the two permutations in a pair. And this applies to every pair, every possible pair that you can uh, uh, choose out of the n elements. So there are nc2 
pairs in total. There are NC two ways of choosing two indices, two different uh, two different indices i and j from the set of indices one to n, and each pair, each of these pairs is going to be an inversion in exactly one of these two permutations. So the number of inversions in the pair as a whole that is if we add the number of inversions in this permutation and in its reverse that total is going to be nc2 and this applies to every single pair among the n factorial by 2 pairs that we have so the average number of inversions if you take the average across all the pairs the average number of inversions per pair is going to be nc2 because every pair has nc2 inversions so the average is also going to be nc2 from this we can conclude that the average number of inversions per permutation is going to be half of nc2 which is n times n minus 1 by 4 so if we were to randomly pick a permutation out of the n factorial permutations we can expect the number of inversions on an average to be n times n minus 1 by 4 So the second choice is the correct one over here